going on guys welcome back to the channel as some of you may already know i am dead smack in the middle of rebuilding this horrendous example of a 997 turbo i got to thinking what would go great with a broken porsche and honestly there's only one answer it's another broken porsche and as someone who well obviously has an affinity for broken cars that sit in the parking lot i figured what can one more possibly hurt Obviously, this car has structural damage front and rear. However, it was listed as running by Copart, and in the five minutes I've spent looking this thing over, it really doesn't look that bad. I did originally buy this car to part it out like the 991 GT3 we just did. But if we don't find any real surprises on there, I mean, it's kind of just too nice not to fix, right, guys? Fernando! I need some muscle! We need to push this GT4 in. Oh, it's light. Yeah, it is light. It feels great, wow, right? Oh, yeah. So you guys are probably asking yourself why we're pushing this thing when it's supposed to run. Well, I don't want to just trust the auction's word. I want to look under it when there's an engine this expensive. I want to make sure it doesn't have a hole in it before I start it. We have the dream team out here. And by dream team, I mean the only guy in the shop that actually has professional bodywork experience and two Porsche fanboys. So take it for what it's worth. We're going to look this thing over and see how bad it is. From what I understand, because, you know, I went right away and started doing some research, that whole front tub removed so we can replace that whole thing. Yeah. This whole top panel with its own piece. We'll have to pop this out and, of course, it's going to have to be moved. We've got to get this. So this is its own panel, basically. From what I understand, because I, I have looked at the diagrams and, you know, maybe put together a little cart on Delaware Porsche parts. The biggest pain is going to be the rivets. I don't know what you'll decide to do with that but you can get them from Porsche, but they are not cheap. $2,500 for the tool to put in those rivets. <laughs> Over here, everything looks intact. Like the headlight bracket and everything, it looks undamaged. So I have to guess that the main impact though, to be clear, this car did not come with any of these body panels. Well, except the bumper. We do have that, and that's a story for a little bit later in the video, but no hood, no headlights. Uh, the spender was cut off, but from what I can gather, the impact what had to be like right here. A high impact. Yeah. It's impressive that you didn't break any of the no, it, coals. In all honesty, it looks like it got rear-ended and pushed underneath something. Like Very possible. Or it could have rear-ended somebody and then got, got smacked behind. in the rear. Yeah. This is my theory, and again, I am by no means an expert on this, though, as you guys know, I've seen a lot of wrecked cars in that building. Do you think that this could have actually not been hit down here, and this was simply the hood getting hit like right there and pulling that whole thing back from the hood latch? Very yeah. possible the hood could have just drug everything back. This latch, it still looks like it's intact, which is pretty damn impressive. These guys have not seen the inside yet, so I guess it's about that time, huh? And then we'll get on to the rest of the damage because, spoiler alert, the interior is beautiful and relatively undamaged. As you guys can see, no airbags went off at all. And while the interior is mostly together, 99% of... Got me. Anyway, while the interior is 99% there, I noticed some stuff on the floorboard when I got it. So it looks like this seatbelt here is locked. Why the seatbelt locked when the bag didn't blow, I do not know. But it did, so we're going to have to replace that. With the bad, comes some good. There's a harness bar back there. So, this thing is track ready. I also scoped out, if you come over here to the driver's side, that we have harnesses. This car is really, truly track ready. It almost raises the question, did this thing get wrecked on track? We'll track this thing. We're not just autocrossing track. it. Ooh. Track, track. And I'm not gonna spoil it yet, but I have a challenge for you guys later in the video. We've talked about the good of this car enough being the interior. Let's get back to the um, not so good. Jeremy, what do you think about this rear? Depending on how perfect you want that to be, that is a absolutely easy fix. You can just pull this. This will come right back. It didn't move either rail. That's just thin. No seam sealers broken. It looks no, like that was kind of just like here, tapped. And then inside the trunk. Oh, yeah. that's not good. Oh, is it cracked? Oh, man. That might explain a little more why this was totaled though, because those wings from Porsche are not cheap. So as bad as that is, and you know, you never want to lift a hatch and see something like that. It's just not good, not a good surprise. However, if that's kind of what led this car to being totaled, because again, like the damage I'm seeing otherwise, it's not that bad. I'll take that all day over a frame rail. We can simply replace that. Or we do have a good friend of ours who is a phenomenal composite guy and has repaired carbon stuff for me in the past. So maybe we'll hit him up. Street Bandito. Who? It's Street Bandito. Who? <laughs> you know it. Whoever actually took this car apart, I guess a body shop, presumably, did us a solid wow. They did mark the floor pan there as needing to be replaced. I have to assume that's insurance markings. Um, it yeah. is slightly bowed. However, again, a little very thin sheet metal. So that will come yeah. right down. I'm not worried about that. The only part that seems a little hard to move would be where it's pinch welded right there, which again, not broken. It's only a seam. It's not even... It's not like fish plated, it's just a seam, so it should still move. So not, not too easy. bad? 
In case you guys can't tell, there's no mufflers on it. We didn't receive a muffler with it. Being that these over the axle pipes are damaged presumably, and now that I look at it, that one is significantly higher than that one, so they're definitely gonna have to be replaced, but I'm gonna assume that the muffler was damaged as well. This transmission sits pretty far back here, and from what I can tell, that's untouched, but we still have to get it on the lift and make sure of that. Looks like the important stuff, the frame rails back here, are uh, intact. Moral of the story here is I think the rear end's gonna be kind of easy-ish. Now I suppose we go back to the not so easy part up here. Again, it appears everything was above that. This little lower lip here is bent up, but that doesn't affect anything whatsoever. All things considered here, while that is, you know, structural damage, I think this would shape up to be a fairly easy rebuild. One other good note, it appears that none of these wheels got touched whatsoever. Not a single wheel has curb rash anything. Minor details on a build like this, but it also appears the tires actually have good tread, which I'm absolutely not going to complain about. How many miles does this car have on it? That is a great question. Wow. 12,732. While you guys know I have no aversion to a high mileage, really bad condition Porsche, the fact that this one has lower mileage actually makes it a little more beneficial to repair because when we're done with it, we can actually sell it for something. I can't wait to hear the engine. You and me both, brother. Right. One thing I do like about this, you guys have seen me struggling with Corvettes and all that stuff. These things, looks like you can just lift it, you know, without having to put wood under the wheels. It seems pretty straightforward. This is like the longest lift ride up ever. It's the suspense, you know? And that's untouched, which is good because it's plastic. Tighten all bolts. Maybe they left this thing loose. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's loose. Shouldn't there be a full like underbody panel here? I was gonna say, there yeah, this probably is, should be a full underbody panel. It should be way more flat under here. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, spin, I just that? saw you spin yeah. that. Yeah. Thanks. Eric playing with something finally <laughs> just did us some good. I hope that's not a track. I don't see that's a track. The tire is low. LF, RF. Yeah, so somebody really actually close. inspected these wheels. Like, I have no idea if you're actually gonna see this video, but if you were the adjuster that looked over this car, or you were the shop that looked over this car definitely reach out because I'd love to hear what you have to say. Furthermore, I'd love to give you guys a shout out because I wish every car that I bought came from you guys. The bottom of the radiators there, they all look intact. This one as well, everything looks good. So what do you think under here, Fernando? I mean, everything Fight looks it up. good. Good to go. I want to hear the engine. I, I mean, I was, I was referring more to like, do you think it's in good shape? Does everything it's look kosher? It's a good shape, but so let's go. Okay. I can't I mean, wait anymore. You get me excited about Probably the quickest underside inspection ever. Fortunately, there's not a whole lot to look at. Everything looks good. I'm, I'll take it. Let me know when you're ready. Send it. That jump box is new. It's charged. Oh. Oh. Try it again. We don't have any leaks whatsoever. Front or back. Again. So we have plenty of oil pressure. Everything else looks pretty kosher. I'm learning here, guys. This is apparently how you go through it. Oh my god. Look at that. Last destination. <laughs> Jeremy over here just whipped this out of the glove box. Porsche Club Chicago region, which this car did come from Chicago. It had Road America in the GPS. Somebody was having a blast with this car. Right, they were doing it right. You so, have to so win it. Props to the owner of this car. Sorry that you know it ended up like this, but um, you were doing it right and I bet you had a blast for 12,000 miles. You wanna do some acting? Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, fans of bad acting everywhere. I present to you the story of how we acquired these. Good drive. Oh no, bumper's actually 200. No. Well, we'll see. What's wrong with this guy? Did you hear it? You get the check. Good. Are you only taking the second bumper? No. Ah. Uh -huh. bumper. No. Nah. Nah. Extra car. 200. No. Extra 200. No. You ain't not. You ain't taking the bumper. Problem. We took the bumper and didn't pay 
or Bill Billy rolls up. Demands more money for the bumpers. Come with the car. We need to get paid for those bumpers. This seems more like a uh, civil matter. I I'd agree. I'd agree. Why don't you go back to West Virginia? Hey, f you too, buddy. What's that rent-a-cop doing here? Moron carrier showed up. I'll, I'll explain later. Oh, okay. There you have it. The true story with minor embellishments, you know, for YouTube. Yes, a car carrier dropped this car off and tried to charge us an extra $200 for the bumpers. We were under contract for a certain price, so we didn't pay more. He got really upset about it and called the police. He left without getting paid, and we got our bumpers. 45 minutes later, he left us a positive review, so... Your guess is as good as mine. It was very important to us to get those parts because of stuff like this. While the bumpers themselves definitely need to be replaced, there were plenty of good parts, not to mention expensive parts, still on them that we can reuse. We saved ourselves probably a couple thousand dollars. Same deal on the rear. While I already took the diffuser off, it does have the reflectors. It does have the upper light, which is unfortunately scratched, but still nice to have. It also came with the diffuser, the exhaust garnishes, the diffuser bracket. So all in all, we saved ourselves a ton of money front and rear. Uh, now that we got that carrier out of here, you uh, wanna go take this thing for a test drive? Okay, let's do a test drive. Let's do it. Guys, I'm honestly kind of nervous here. First drive in the Porsche. Um, obviously the car is nowhere near together. So hopefully everything goes smooth. The radio is flickering because I have the jump box off and the battery is dead as a doornail, but I'm optimistic. I just realized I got talking and left him on the side of the street. We are barely into this test drive. You guys already heard some bad. The good, it drives pretty straight. The wheel is ever so slightly cocked to the left, um, but that can be fixed with an alignment. I'm not necessarily ready to write that off as an issue. We'll have him hook the jump box back up because it's just sitting in the front right now. And uh, hopefully that cures a little bit of our issues. Uh, hook the jump box back up, please. Is it dying? Um, kind of. It has voltage issues for sure. Okay, I thought I heard it sound like it was breaking up. I think it was. That's voltage, I guarantee. It's so it's there. It's much better. Right? Yeah. I need your opinion because this is you're the one that people want to hear from on this. How's it sound? So I have a question for the comment section. I want to know if the people that are really Porsche enthusiasts actually think that these motors sound good, or if it's just like an accepted fact that they're the worst sounding motor ever built. <laughs> Sounds exactly like that UPS truck. Ah, that was impressive, actually. That was serious torque. What was that second? That was first. Oh, okay, but still, like that yeah. was a lot of torque. I was not expecting yeah. that. This car, I feel like, can get away with it to a certain degree because yeah. it's very like race oriented. Yeah. So it doesn't like have to sound really good. It, it, Your car, though. It's it's a street like 911. It's a race like, car. Oh my it's god! It's a race car. It's a street car. It, it's not even gonna make a thousand. It's a street car. It is open cat, I guess if you want to call it that. We're riding around like the Honda boys, and it still sounds good in my opinion. Give her another little blimp. I like it. I like it. Funny story, guys. That is my first time running a Porsche to Redline ever, <laughs> ever. You guys know the 911 Turbo is not done yet. I haven't driven another fast Porsche. I drove around a box to rest around the parking lot of my old salvage yard. I don't think that counts. You guys know I've been on the Porsche train since I got the 911 Turbo, and uh, this kind of confirms it. I, uh, I need to order the full wardrobe, guys. The glasses, the shirt, the hat, everything. Oh, I'm about to screw up. I'm about to... I don't have my wallet. I brought thought up here. I'm gonna make him pay for it. <laughs> Whoops. Hey, uh, bud. I, uh, I forgot my wallet. You gotta be shitting me. This is a freaking joke. <laughs>
this thing definitely validates everything I've thought about Porsche. It definitely makes me not only more excited to get this done, but now if I wasn't already excited enough for the 911 Turbo, this really did it. You could have done better on the cup holders, Porsche. Oh, wait, hell hold we... on. There are cup holders. Oh, hell yeah. What a nice day for a ride to Starbucks and a new whip. I guess we've accomplished all the, you know, typical first day Porsche owner stuff that we needed to do. We, you know, we got coffee and stood outside the car and took pictures for 10 minutes. So, I guess it's time to uh, head on back. Are you wearing loafers? I'm not wearing loafers. Oh, no, that's no. a mistake. If we get to take it to a track this summer, what track should we take it to? I'll let you guys pick. There's at least, I don't know, what, five, six? Yeah tracks that were within a several hour drive that we could go uh -oh. to. Oh, and we're, we're not going several hour drive. We're, we're doing it big. You guys put any track, any track in the lower 48 in the comments, the one with the most likes, I take this car to when it's done. Yeah, we're going to Laguna Seca. I'm already calling it right now. How, how does that How does that not happen? Or maybe Road Atlanta. I can see Road Atlanta. Yeah, you know. Road Atlanta, like, the Road Atlanta is definitely drivable. I mean, if you're feeling really generous, just say, you know, Dominion or Summit Point and I'll have it knocked out in an afternoon. But, um, yeah, this is in your hands. I'll let you guys pick. Good. Can you not get traction off? There's so many lights on and traction controls on. We'll give it one more shot here. I'm not going to sweat it if we can't do it. Um, that just means we'll have to rip it all the harder once we get the thing actually back together. traction control is bad ass <laughs> seriously if you tried to pitch this thing sideways in a corner you couldn't do it like a, a, a beginner could drive this car you could take this car on the track for the first time ever and be relatively safe as funny as that sounds so even you can drive it dog well i'll put it to the test <laughs> I spoke with the guys at Delaware Porsche Parts earlier this morning. Unfortunately, a bulk of what we need is in stock and can be here by the end of the week. I'm going to go ahead and get all that stuff ordered and then first thing in the morning, I'm going to get in here and start tearing into it. Hopefully we don't find any surprise damage. Hopefully everything remains as positive as it has been in this video, but you never know. I will see you guys back here very, very soon. Oh, it's a deer. What's up? You want some? Yeah, get back in there. Like, Eric talks about, like, Miatas, and he's like, oh, no, the, the two liters are torque. I'm like, no, they're f***ing not. <laughs> oh, no, boy. It ain't easy being a YouTuber. I don't know if I, like, I definitely tried to push it, it, and I guess I just missed the button. <laughs> now, I have looked over this interior for a total of about five minutes at this point, but the seats are phenomenal. Are they phenomenal? Phenomenal. You hey, hear it in the comments. What's that? You call this the PDK fan. Oh, shit, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely called this a PDK, and Eric comes over, he's like, not a PDK. You are a jockey? Why is this the first I'm hearing of that? The stories that come out of this place, like, what? Yeah, those would be an extra 200. Them there bumpers, extra 200. Are you kidding me? Does Mike just die? No. Thank you, officer. I, I agree. You're just going to leave me hang? West Virginia Fernando, there we go. Bass Pro Shop. <laughs> did, I, did, I, did I just make sense, you know? West Virginia Fernando. <laughs>